Hello everybody, Crashfield here and today's video I want to take you through the customization options in uh, World War 3 uh, as there is quite a lot of things that you can change, customize with your soldier, your equipment, your name, banners, etc. I think it's uh, uh, worth to do a quick video on that and to show you how uh, deep the customization system here is in this game. <clears throat> so yeah, let's start off. Uh, when you hit customize uh, you can basically choose from four uh, different uh, menu items. There's identification, equipment, strikes and character. Let's start with identification. So yeah, so identification basically identifies you as a soldier, right? So you can uh, choose the banner uh, and the emblem. The banner is displayed on your player card, so whenever, for example, somebody kills you or you kill somebody and uh, and the uh, kill feed and the kill screen, uh, you you know the the, the killer is presented. Uh, he or she will see uh, your banner. Uh, there is plenty of different banners. You unlock them through the progression to your level 51, or simply by unlocking the next level. So if you battle pass, some of them are also granted you for free by the producers of World War 3. As you can see, there is quite nice designs here. Right now I'm running with my battleship one, uh, which is like has some um, uh, uh, relation to Poland. Uh, come from Poland, so that's quite close to me. Uh, then uh, the second thing is emblem. So you can also choose from various emblems uh, depending on your mood and your style. Uh, right now I have the battleship one. Uh, the emblem is also, as you can see on my uh, um, on the on the player banner, uh, the emblem is also presented on the uh, kill feed on the kill card. After, like I said, with the uh, with the uh, banner, you kill somebody or you are uh, killed by someone. And lastly, you can of course choose the flag. Uh, of the country are coming from. Uh, I come from Poland, like I said, so uh, obviously I chose the, the Polish flag, and the flag is presented also on the various uh, equipment pieces on your soldier, like you can see here. Uh, my flag is presented on the arm uh, of, of the soldier. And you can rename your player, right? Um, now, the bread and butter uh, of World War Three is the configuration of your equipment, your strikes, and your character. So let's start with the equipment because I think this is it provides the deepest uh, configuration options uh, in World War III. Uh, so once you go here, you can see that you can set up uh, more than 10 different loadouts. So when you start uh, on level one, uh, you start playing World War III, you are basically um, have option to uh, set up uh, up to, as far as I remember, five loadouts with the weapons that are available to you on level one. And then, and then once you progress through the levels, more loadouts uh, slots are unlocked for you uh, with the pre-configured weapons that are actually unlocked also on certain levels, right? So for example, Scar Age would also unlock on level, level I think, 35, uh, will be unlocked within the loadout slot, right? Um, now let's take M416 loadout. Of course, you can rename them however you want. Uh, I used to use like uh, engineer, sniper, assault, medic, uh, loadout names. Then, well, I ran out of names, so I decided to uh, name them by the weapons that are set up in the specific loadout. Uh, yeah, let's head into my 416 M416 loadout. Now here you can uh, choose the primary weapon, the secondary weapon, the uh, armor plate and head armor. Uh, primary gadget, secondary gadget, and your backpack. I'll get into backpack uh, later on as it provides one pesky feature that is uh, uh, very uh, helpful and if it comes for configuration. So yeah, so once click on primary weapon, you can see all the weapons that you have available to choose. Uh, I'm on level 51, so basically I unlocked all the weapons that there were. There are some which you are unlocking uh, while progressing through a battle pass uh, or completing certain achievements. So you can see QBZ95 is still locked for me. Uh, but yeah, maybe one day I will unlock it. Once you choose it, um, let's choose the M416. You can click customization and then 
here is the actual play comes in, right? You can uh, select from primary side, secondary side, under barrel attachment, magazine uh, type, secondary ammo that you have in your backpack, uh, side attachment to your rail, uh, the barrel and the muzzle, and of course some um, visualization configuration, right? So weapon skin, the sticker, pistol grip, uh, hand guard, the stock or magazine funnel. Like for example, for the stock, uh, I still have some locked. Uh, you can unlock them either by level up, leveling up particular weapon, in this case M416, or some uh, attachments or visual visualization attachments are also shared across different weapons. So for example, uh, I can unlock Sockham stock uh, by upgrading uh, or leveling up different weapon, right? And you can change the, the stock, how it looks like directly from here. Uh, the same comes for the pistol grip. I have the Juno pistol grip in this case. So actually it locks. Uh, if I, for example, choose this, then I'd be able to swap between the pistol grips uh, or gun grips. Um, I like the Juno one, it looks really, really nice. If it comes for the scans as well, you unlock them through progression of your weapon. Um, the current uh, level of my M416 is for 54, so in two levels I'd be able to unlock the Polish Grey uh, weapon skin, which actually looks nice. You can of course check the uh, next unlocks and the progression by clicking here. Uh, as you can see, there is oh, quite a lot of stuff you can unlock for a weapon up to the level 66 actually um, yeah then if it comes let's go back to the uh, performance attachments there are three categories of uh, the size iron sights collimators and colo and medium ma uh, magnification scopes um, you can have the sight uh, collimator or iron sight which is quite helpful if you want, for example, to go with the medium uh, side as your primary uh, side and then on this side to have like, for example, like uh, hollow or iron sides, depending on your preferences. Uh, under barrel attachments, grips, basically what they do is uh, they, uh, they have pros and cons, as you can see. Uh, some of them increase uh, you know, vertical recoil while at the same time decreasing horizontal recoil or vertical recoil minus 30% and increasing the horizontal rec uh, rec recoil or ADS time. Depending on your play style, how you feel the weapon, you basically can customize fully uh, the weapon to your preferences, right? Uh, normally, I go for the vertical recoil um, reduction. I think it's uh, more dif difficult to handle in comparison to, say, horizontal recoil. Uh, but it varies based on the weapons, right? For some weapons, like Scourge, uh, which has a very high horizontal recoil, it's actually better to go with the horizontal, horizontal recoil decrease uh, rather than vertical, or you can actually tailor that to have both. Uh, the secondary ammo, uh, you can have like a full metal jacket, uh, hollow points or armor piercing uh, ammo. They also come with uh, some pros and cons. Um, the barrels. You can have the standard barrel, which is a balanced one. Uh, you have a, you can have a compact one, which is uh, increases the damage, for example, in close range combat, and decreases the ADS time and weapon swap time. But at the same time, decreases long range damage and increases recoil and sway. Um, you can have the marksman barrel, which is a uh, uh, opposite to what the compact barrel does. Um, and the muzzle flash as well, like it's a very uh, very good to combine that with the grip that you have. So I'm using a muzzle brake that decreases vertical recoil. And for example, if that, that's enough for you, you can go, uh, if it comes for the grip, with the decrease in horizontal recoil. So the weapon will be more easier to, to manage uh, in, the, in the combat. Um, What's cool about that is that if you go to, let's say, uh, M416, you have your configs of blueprints, right? So basically, you are able to save uh, different configuration of your weapons, right? So configs are the ones that you are creating by yourself, blueprints. 
are well there's a stop blueprint for your weapon but also through the progression uh, and battle pass uh, or in store what you can buy you can buy uh, pre-configured blueprints for your weapon right they come with uh, sometimes customized weapon skin uh, or other attachments that are well they are available in, in the standard customization uh, but yeah, but well, the game designers simply put together all the uh, bits and pieces of the weapon to provide a certain uh, configuration to your weapon. Um, yeah. So in customization, you have you, you once you customize your weapon, you just hit the save custom config. You see what the customization is. You can rename it, and then just you know swap between them uh, mid game. Uh, what's important? Yeah, the same applies basically uh, uh, for the secondary weapon. I'm using here a sidearm. Um, then the next thing you have to decide for is the armor plate and head armor. Uh, there is a choice between Kevlar, ceramic, and steel plate. Uh, for head armor, is titanium material and Kevlar material. Uh, you have a primary gadget, which uh, for this uh, loadout I have my med pack, but you can choose from med pack, equipment pack that replenishes your armor, gadget, and grenades, and ammo pack that replenishes your uh, uh, magazines or rockets. <clears throat> you have your uh, secondary gadget, uh, which are grenades, anti tank mines, claymore mines, C4, uh, Semtex grenade, and impact grenade. And you have your backpack. So basically, uh, in your backpack, you can store additional equipment for a weapon that you can hot swap during the round. Uh, so you have your primary site, you can choose from a reflex site or um, some combined size like three times magnification and automatic spotting. Uh, you have your offset, which is the site uh, site located on your rail gun, uh, on the on the gun of the rail of your gun. Uh, here also there are a few options to choose from. You can have uh, a swappable under barrel attachment, uh, either the grenade launcher or the shotgun. And of course the muzzle, in this case we have two uh, suppressors that we can choose from with a uh, bit different statistics. Well, the very basically either is horizontal recall reduction or vertical recall reduction. Now what's is very important when making the configuration and the loadout for your weapon is paying attention to the uh, loadout weight. You can see, oh, it's swapping. You can see that uh, on the right side. Uh, currently, my loadout weight is uh, medium mobility, so you can have either low, medium, or high mobility. Right. The difference between them is basically comes down to how long you can use the traverse sprint. Right. So. Or with the um, low mobility uh, or high mobility actually you can uh, do the longer traverse sprint with medium it's a bit shorter and the high, high, low mobility which is gonna show that the graph uh, on the points in red it's basically you can traverse very shortly right so when choosing specific weapons let's say I want to change this weapon uh, the secondary weapon because you can do that to something heavier uh, let's say to AK. If I'm uh, reaching the limit, it will tell me that okay, you you, don't, you can't use that weapon and that's loadout. And as a secondary sidearm, you have to choose something different. Uh, let's try. If you go with RPG, it's the same case. But if you go with SMG, you can have assault rifle and SMG in your loadout at the same time. Let's go back and change this to uh, uh, Lebedev. Uh, handgun. Um, what is also the second thing uh, worth mentioning and that comes uh, with the functionality of the backpack, right? So when you're customizing your weapon you can see that you have in, uh, in case of M416 you have five um, uh, attachment slots, right? So I put here the extra ammo, the grip, the uh, magazine, the uh, muzzle and the side uh, attachment, right? As you and from you, what you can see, I'm using the iron sights, right? I could, of course, choose the iron sights here, uh, change the iron sights to hollow, for example, but then I will have to swap one of the other attachments that I have. But what you can do, actually, and it's very much recommended, is that in your custom backpack, you can have the reflex sight that you can hot swap during the, during the game, right? And when you start your game, you can easily equip the 
uh, reflex sight from your backpack and it doesn't take your uh, weapon attachment slot, right? So you can actually go with, let's say, in my backpack, I have the reflex sight, I have the offset sight. I can put on uh, both on the weapon and actually end up with seven uh, attachments on my weapon, right? And of course, if you have two different weapons, you can use the backpack attachments uh, freely on every weapon that you have actually uh, currently equipped, right? So this is a very handy, uh, let's call it a feature. Hopefully, a Farm 51 won't change that in the future, but it allows you to configure your weapon with five uh, different attachments. Just leave out the, the, the side attachment and then pick, it, uh, pick the one from the backpack once you uh, get into the game. Uh, yeah, so like I said, uh, there are different loadouts as you can see on my screen. I have M416, SIG and uh, RPG for, you know, fighting in close quarters and maybe with some vehicles. Um, SA80, <coughs> QBZ191 and shotgun. This is a very nice combination, it gives you the, uh, a lot of power in the close quarters, but also uh, QBZ is a very good weapon for medium and longer distances. Uh, the sniper loadout, which I'm rarely using in this game, and for silence, if I want to be, you know, a sneaky ninja style uh, guy and just, uh, you know, going from corner to corner and just taking out the, uh, the guys in the rooms. Scourge, one of my favorite assault rifles or battle rifles, as they call them in, um, in World War III. Uh, I really much enjoy it, uh, very much enjoy it, and uh, it, it, it has a lot of punch and medium and long distances. MSBS, which is a Polish assault rifle uh, with RPG. AK-15, uh, KNT-762, which is a new battle rifle added with Season 3. Uh, it has a wonderful sound of, of uh, when shooting. I'll show you that in the next video. Uh, I'll be recording the gameplay. Uh, G36 and the Korean K2C1, which is, in terms of uh, performance, is very close to M416 and M4. Actually, a very nice guys to a very nice, uh, very nice gun to use. Okay, that was about the equipment. Uh, like I said, uh, you unlock the uh, loadout slots uh, as you progress through the uh, levels. On level 51, you unlock the last loadout slot, and then you can just freely change them mid-game uh, whenever you you know you die and then you want to change your weapon. Uh, although with the season three, they added also the mm, a feature that allows you to swap the loadouts uh, on end them up. So we are playing. Um, so yeah, that, I'll show you that in the next video as well. The sex, next thing is, is strikes. So strikes basically, this is um, additional help on your battlefield that allows you to call in um, an UAV uh, a support uh, strike, which is for example an artillery strike and a vehicle, right? So. The same as with the um, uh, your weapon loadouts, you unlock the loadout slots as you progress through the levels. As you can see, uh, most of them are pre-configured. Uh, I have two that I'm using uh, alternatively, which is the main and alternative. Well, the name stands for it. Uh, which is UAV, the shrapnel, artillery, and the Abrams tank. And the second one is uh, Barracuda UAV, a uh, Hellfire missile that you can control uh, by yourself, and uh, uh, boomerang uh, uh, infantry vehicle. And basically, if, for example, we take the main, uh, you can configure what you want to have here, right? You can see that uh, the the cost of using the uh, the specific uh, uh, strike. So, for example, UAV costs you one thousand two hundred uh, service points. The service points are the points that you are getting for every action in the game. So, taking on an objective killing an enemy, healing uh, your uh, teammates, replenishing their ammo, and so on and so on, right? So once you reach, you can see the uh, your service points in the game uh, and the UI, and the HUD. Uh, once you reach, uh, let's say, 1,200 service points, uh, you can use it. And for example, for UAV, uh, there are three options. You have the Flying Eye, you have the Barracuda one, and the OTV. Uh, OTV basically, uh, reveals enemies across all map. Barracuda, you just uh, choose this spot on the map, and it, you know makes the uh, medium-sized circle where it spots the enemies. 
uh, and then the jammer uh, either is uh, Reaper or UCAS uh, dash D. Basically, what Jammer does, it's uh, it serves two purposes. So the first one is that it's um, screwing up your HUD, so you can't see your minimap, for example. So you can't see your enemies on the minimap, you know, closing into the objective, for example, right? And the second thing is that when you are under the uh, Jammer influence, you can't use your strikes. Right? So you can't call out your artillery or UAV, etc. Right? So it's a very good tactics when, for example, you want to take over an objective, you drop a jammer over the objective where you know that the enemies are, and then, for example, you try to flank them from an uh, uncommon angle, right? And uh, just you know clear the objective with your teammates. Uh, I use the, the jammer and UAV like alternatively, uh, depending on... You know, uh, whether I want to push or I want to reveal my enemies. Then for the support uh, strikes, um, you have air strikes, artillery, and bombing. So uh, I mostly use artillery. So you basically just select the spot on the map, hit the, bat the mouse button, and then there's an artillery strike. Either you can have the uh, infantry focus artillery, or you can have the anti-armor uh, artillery. Um, the uh, the airstrike, uh, you choose the, the spot, you hit it, you know, your soldier opens a small tablet and you can basically a little bit maneuver your uh, your airstrike to hit the, uh, the desired spot. And the bombing is, uh, it takes some time to actually uh, happen because there is, you know, in game airplane that needs to go over the map. You select the, uh, the spot where you want to drop your bombs and uh, well, it clears the objectives pretty nice, to be honest. Uh, and lastly, uh, you have your vehicles that you can call in. Here, there is a bunch of them. You have your aerial drones that you can use, land drones that you can, you know, hide in a certain spot on your map and just, you know, fire up your Leviathan and, and just drive around the map and, and kill, you know, the, the infantry. You have infantry fighting vehicles. Uh, armored vehicles, armor fighting vehicles, tank destroyers, and of course you have main battle tanks like Leopard T-72 Abrams and Type X or uh, the Chinese Z-99. Yeah, and the strikes, like I said, they require the uh, the service points, or I call them also attrition points. Uh, it is good to have them so that uh, configure in the way that, uh, for example, you can use UAV quite often. Uh, 1,200 service points is not much actually. You can use it quite often. There is also a, um, you know, a duration, uh, uh, re sort of like renewal time for the for the for the use of UAV. I think it's 60 or 120 seconds. Can't remember right now. Uh, so it's not just about the service points, but you have to also work, uh, wait for the for the for the uh, strike to uh, be able to use it, even if you have your points. Uh, yep, yeah, and well, it's just basically a nice addition and help uh, um, on the battlefield. And lastly, you have uh, your character customization. Here you can have three pre-configured uh, soldiers that you can of course change uh, during the, the round however you want. I have here for the urban fights, uh, the forest fight, let's say, since World War Three has some nice forest maps as well, and the desert setting. Uh, you can customize your uh, soldier however you want. There are also uh, pre-configured operators that you unlock either through the, um, uh, well, you can buy them in the shop or you can lock them through the uh, battle pass. So depending on the uh, on the theme of the battle pass, like this time is the Turkish uh, theme, uh, before it was uh, a Korean one, you basically unlock the uh, pre-configured operators uh, that you can, uh, of course, you can choose them. You can then configure them as as as, as you want. You can swap there, you know, the the, the helmet, uh, boots, pants, uh, jacket, and so on. Uh, but yeah, but they are very nice. Uh, but I have to admit, if it comes to World War Three, the soldier models and the uniforms they are awesome, right? They are very very detailed, realistic looking. I don't like the war zone style, you know, funny. Um, uh, you know, uniforms that you can put on, like, you know, the bunny ears or something like this. It's not my... Battlefield 2042 uh, actually is unfortunately turning towards that 
uh, direction, you know, adding a very gimmicky uh, weapon. Well, not weapon skins, one thing, but uh, the, the soldier skins, which I don't like so much. I, I much prefer the <clears throat> the uniforms that you can have in World War Three, right? Uh, yeah, and if it comes for the configuration, you can change a bunch of things here as well. So you can change the head. Obviously, I have my helmet here. Uh, the headwear, right? There is a lot of to choose from. Uh, you can change the skin, right? Uh, for some, some skins are available. For other, uh, the, the options are limited. You can uh, you can change the, the face wear, right? Uh, baklava, uh, gas mask. But since I'm wearing my helmet, some of the options are uh, not active. Uh, face paint, uh, gloves, right? You have different gloves to choose from depending on the style. The chest, right? Once you choose the chest, you can also uh, choose the, uh, the, um, the color scheme uh, for the chest. Uh, the body paint, right? So some tattoos and, and stuff like this. Um, and of course your pants, right? Uh, then there is a personal customization. You can add the arm patch. I have currently I'm wearing the Polish uh, arm patch, right? But you can choose to, you know, whatever suits your preference. If it comes for the, uh, you have United States Marine Corps, uh, Korean Navy, Spatial, uh, Chinese, the, the, the uh, Turkish ones, uh, uh, the British ones. You have some uh, like World War Three or Yin Yang. Um, uh, uh, military patch arm patches and of course uh, in social you have nothing and under uh, personal you can also choose the flag which I mentioned before that is presented on your arm uh, uh, the sort of like, sort of like the, the sentence that you want to put on your soldier like gravy seals uh, I think it's Korean the, the freedom and Japanese uh, and the um, uh, Turkish one and then there are some socials ahead the dog paw uh, like the best, you have the good guy, yeah, so basically some personal touch to your soldier. Um, like I said, I have the three settings, uh, the urban, the forest and the desert, but you can basically uh, go and configure it the way you want. Um, yeah, and pretty much that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments, uh, subscribe, like my video, and see you in the next one. Have fun!